Hello, traders. Adrian Jones here, CEO at Tradeology. Thanks for joining me today. And today I'm going to give you another of my weekly updates, my forecasts for the week on Forex, gold, and cryptocurrencies. So let's get started. And I'm going to move over to the charts. All right. So firstly, before we get to the charts, I just want to also um, go through the economic calendar for the week. And for this week ahead, I've gone to this site, although you could go to any of these uh, sites with similar calendars. And I've basically um, filtered out all the low impact news and just having a look at the high impact news that's due for the week. Now, as you can see, the week ahead is pretty quiet. Nothing much really happening except for on Wednesday, we have two high impact news events. Um, potentially affecting one, the pound, and the other, the uh, United States dollar. So at 12 p.m. on Wednesday, looking at the Bank of England, Governor Bailey is going to be talking, and a bit later in the day, the Fed Chair Powell is also going to make an announcement. Now, there's nothing much unexpected um, going to happen there, I don't think. I think the market's basically factored in what they're going to say, We've seen last week that um, in the US uh, there's been an increase in employment um, and also with the BAE they've indicated that they're not going to take um, a view on negative interest rates just yet. Things are going to stay as they are. So pretty much I think it's been factored in. But nevertheless, I still recommend for half an hour before, 30 minutes before, 30 minutes after not to during these times as the market can be slightly volatile and work in unexpected ways during those times. So let's just keep an eye on those two times, please. Other than that, it's pretty quiet. Nothing much really happening. It is the Lunar New Year in China and um, some Eastern countries. And that also will have an effect on lowering the volumes of trades uh, for the next couple of days also. So just to bear that in mind too. But let's have a look firstly then at the Forex market and where things could be heading over the next the course of the next week. So with the euro, what we've seen basically is nothing much changed since last week, except for um, the fact that they're continuing with their vaccine rollouts. There seems to be some delays with that, that side. So that would be something that does affect the euro. Um, as against the pound in, with uh, the UK, we can see that the vaccine rollout is progressing strongly and they're making gains there. And um, so, you know, that kind of comes into play also, as well as the Brexit um, politics. But nothing really has changed over the course of the last week. Uh, what I do see still with the euro, with the USD, and I just have one of my systems here. This is the. Um, uh, a system that I've, I've put up that you could be using any of the systems, but basically on the daily chart here, the Euro USD, you can see that the channel that I drew last week, price is pretty much following along through that channel and has reached a key point here. Um, key support area at 1.202 and closed below that, but has risen above it again. Now, the signals that I'm getting generally here yeah, are pretty mixed, but overall more bearish. I do expect that price will continue within a range on a downward tra trajectory overall over the next few days. And I do see it going lower. And um, the key point that I'd like to look out for here yeah, is once it crosses through the 1.20 level, which it's basically at now, if it moves back downwards, then we could be heading towards a 1.191 level. And that could take place during the course of the next few days. So overall, on the Euro USD, I'm looking out for bearish trades on the lower time frames. I'll only be entering the bearish trades for now. And uh, I do expect that it's going to be range bound for the next day or so and the downwards. Once it crosses below this this level here, 1.20, then to head down towards the 1.2, I'm um, sorry, 1.19 level. Now, if 
there's some unexpected news release and it does head further up, then we could be looking at it heading towards a 1.21 level, um, a key psychological level there. But for the moment, um, I'm just, as I mentioned, looking out for bearish trades there. Now, for the pound USD, something slightly different. What we have on here, of course, you would have noticed if you've been following along my analysis, I've got my key areas here on the Fibonacci expansion tool. And these have been set a while back. The price has uh, risen recently to its highest levels in almost two years. And it's still following an upward moving channel and ascending channel here. And has been, as I expected last week, pretty much range bound during that time. The indicators are still mixed. So we're getting mixed signals. It's still pretty much ranging. It's reached its top of the level here at um, most recently at about 1.37. And currently is sitting very close to that. Now, if it does break above that, which I expect it to do over the next couple of days, as we mentioned, there is a, uh, the Bank of England are going to be making an announcement on Wednesday. So there's probably going to be a bit of ranging movement until then, but that's been pretty much factored in. I do see it on the increase after that. And uh, then we'll be looking at key support uh, or resistance levels, 1.38, uh, a key psychological level there. So for the moment, over the next couple of days, I see it as ranging Monday, Tuesday, after Wednesday. I'm looking forward to it uh, increasing in value, 1.38 pounds strengthening there. Um, and if it does dip, if there's some unexpected news that comes out, of course, we do have daily news. It's not on the calendar. Something unexpected could happen and it does retrace, I would expect that it would retrace back down and find support at the 1.35 level. But for the moment, pretty much expecting it to stay range bound around 1.36 to 7 and eventually hit 1.38 a little bit later in the week. Let's see how that plays out. Now, there's also uh, in the States, what's affecting the dollar is, uh, of course, they're still going on with their vaccine program there, as in most places in the world. And um, the stimulus measures announced by Biden recently are still on track. It's just a question of the amount, it seems, that is a little bit uh, uncertain. But the key point is that that's going to cause a lot of liquidity to come into the market. The market's going to be more liquid. Um, we also seen the... Um, Yield on government bonds is still strong, increasing there. And all of this basically is factored into weaken the dollar um, over time. We know that the euro area, I should have mentioned earlier, they are still keen on keeping the euro weak uh, for competitive advantage. But the way things are playing out in states at the moment, the US dollar is also weakening slightly. Uh, so as against the pound, I do see it weakening further against the pound over the next few days. All indications point to that for me. Now, for the Australian dollar, we can see that um, last week I have put this flag type formation up here. There's a channel that it's been moving up, up with over the last while, a few months since last year. And this is again on the daily chart, the Aussie USD. And price is currently moving through a channel and look at that as being the pole. You can see that it's still moving up and down between that. And as I expected last week, it was going to be ranging between these two uh, channel lines here. And at the moment, it's at 0 0.76 is, is the price. And I do expect it to find key support here at 0 0.75 uh, over the course of the next few days, should it dip further. But overall, I do see that... Um, uh, it will continue to climb at least for the next few days, at least till the upper channel. I do expect that it will still stay within this channel and we could be looking at key areas again at 0 0.770 uh, around that level there to find resistance. And for the moment, over the next couple of days, that's where I'm expecting it to head uh, before retracing and being more range bound once again. The next few days so overall i'd be looking out for bullish trades here there's going to be a mix of trades but on the lower time frames bullish trades on this particular um pair 
And um, that's what we'll be looking at, at there. Now, we just want to have a look at some of the um, other key indices. We are looking now at gold, which you can find, by the way, on your MT4 platform. Just have a look. In the new charts, you can always move down to um, metals and XAU USD, that's gold. XAG USD, that's silver. And these have been in the news quite a bit lately. So I'm going to cover them quickly. And this is again on a daily chart of gold USD. And we can see some support levels here, major support levels that I've uh, highlighted in yellow. And overall, price has been declining. Uh, we can see that uh, just a couple of weeks ago, even it was at just above $1,870 and has retraced since then. One of the reasons for this is there's less risk in the markets. Uh, people aren't heading into gold at the moment. Um, as long as the um, government yield bonds in America remain high and move higher, people are putting their money into those in the market. So gold, again, I don't expect will rise during the course of this week. I see the indicators currently on the daily time frame are telling me that uh, things are looking bearish. And I do see it falling down over the next few days to $1,765 or thereabouts um, as it continues to be somewhat range bound also for the next few days. But overall, I'm looking bearish on gold and um, I'd be looking out for sell trades mainly on the lower time frames here with this over the course of this week. Now, silver, um, silver we saw uh, recently, last week, you'll see there was some uh, private groups on Reddit, private communities, etc., that drove the price of silver way high up until uh, around the $30 level. And then what we saw was a false breakout, really. It, it's retraced back down to levels pre that. and um, and is now basically ranging there. I do see um, some strength still in, in silver, does behave similarly to gold. However, um, what we're seeing at the moment is that price has increased a little bit. It's come off support here at uh, 25, uh, around the $25.80 level and is currently at $27, which is a key area. Once it uh, passes that, which it seems to be doing, if this candle closes above that, then I do see it progressing higher to the uh, close to the 28 level uh, this week. So overall, for silver, I'm looking out for buy trades here. I do expect it'll take a bit of time, though. Uh, I don't see any major shocks in the market, so it'll be longer term trades. So on the lower time frames, we're going to be looking out for um, buy trades here. Bullish, uh, bullish trades on that. So um, just to recap then on what we've spoken about now, as far as all these are concerned, uh, with the calendar, nothing much really happening during the course of this week. Just look out for Wednesday. For the Euro USD, I'm looking bearish in my lower time frames uh, for the rest of the week, in fact. And for the pound USD, I am expecting it to be ranging, although I'm going to be looking out for bullish trades mainly on the lower time frames. So Aussie USD also pretty much range bound this week, although I am looking out for bullish trades on the lower time frames on that. For gold, range bound, sideways moving, nothing much really expected. If anything, I do expect uh, it to be more bearish this week. And on silver, uh, I'm going to be placing more buy trades and sell trades as I expect the price to rise. So what's happening on the crypto side? Well. We'll cover that now. We've seen Bitcoin over the last few weeks rise to record highs before retreating down to around $31,000. And then recently on the weekends, remember on the weekends, price does tend to rise. The, uh, cryptos can be traded also on the weekends. It's not a five-day a week market. And a lot of movement happens on the weekends. Um, so we have seen a lot of 
for example, Elon Musk making tweets again and, and so on. So there's a lot more happening. Um, it seems also that hedge funds are becoming more interested in investing as hedges um, with, uh, or to diversify their portfolios with uh, some uh, crypto stock in there. So that's been a good thing. Now, also what we've seen is, of course, that Ethereum over the course of this week has also increased to astronomical levels. And let me just go and show you some of these. Now, we can see um, price currently at the time of making this is $39,400. And it has decreased slightly you know, from the highs that it should have been at, but it's up 15% on the day. And it's definitely up from the $31,000 it was at very recently. And uh, this is a uh, course of over the last week. We can see our price went up to that high, came back down, and is now at $39,400. I do expect, I'm still bullish on Bitcoin. I do expect it to go up. What I'm looking for is it to head up towards the $40,000 level where it's going to find resistance. And um, so I'm looking out for bullish trades here. And if you're holding Bitcoin, for a longer term, I do see it rising higher than 40 and perhaps even getting to around 42,000 over the course of the next couple of weeks. But uh, as we know, this is very volatile, changes even as I speak, but um, there is opportunity uh, to the upside and uh, still quite a way to go, you know, till it gets to its high uh, recently of 41,000 on the 8th uh, and 6th of February again. So, you know, it's come down but I do expect that it will go up. It's low at one point here, it was 33,000 on the 1st of February, just six days ago. So that's quite a remarkable increase, even at $39,000. Uh, but it's finding resistance around that $40,000 level. And I do expect that it will go higher there. Now we've seen for some of the other um, currencies like Ethereum, it's reached an all-time high of $1,700 recently. And that's the first time it's ever got to that level. There seems to be a lot of interest in it. I do expect it to go higher. I'd be looking at key areas. $1,800 would be the next target there. So very good uh, uh, crypto to look out for, Ethereum especially. It seems more uh, likely than Bitcoin at this point to rise. So I am looking out for that. And for those of you who are interested in Litecoin, we've also seen a rise. It's at an all-time high of $157. And um, that's could likely rise also. But as we know, the market is fickle. A whale just needs to make its uh, person who holds a large amount of Bitcoin or, or the like, just needs to make one market move, one withdrawal, uh, and things can change very quickly. But as things go at the moment, it's looking positive for cryptos. I'm positive on cryptos for the next while. They're not going anywhere. And um, in fact, the interest is growing in them. I am expecting you're holding it to um, keep it to keep it for a few more weeks. We should get to the forty-two thousand dollar level, perhaps by the weekend. And uh, looking only really to buy trades if you're trading on Bitcoin or Ethereum. Looking only really for bullish trades at the moment um, on these. So that's it for today, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Now I will give you another presentation every week. Um, and it's just really to give you a quick guide into what's happening in the markets and what to look out for on some key currencies and, of course, on commodities and crypto. So thanks for watching, guys. I uh, hope you have a fantastic trading week ahead. And goodbye for now.